Hi everyone, my name is Jen Gordon. I'm the Director of Advocacy for the YW Kitchener Waterloo and one of the facilitators of our Network of Navy Neighbors Violence Intervention Training. I wanted to talk to you all today about something we focus on in the training, uh, which is isolation. And why isolation is so important is that it's one of the first red flags that you'll notice in terms of someone experiencing an abusive relationship. Uh, but it's also a really coercive tool that introduces violence as being normal and can also escalate violence. And essentially what this looks like is the individual starts to get cut off from family, friends, and activities that they once loved. And when this happens, we start to see that there's less people to check in on that person's safety and well-being, which means that some of the signs of abuse can go unnoticed, uh, which we know links to a repeated experience, the idea of getting away um, with that abuse. There's increased opportunities for grooming, which can lead to disorientation because that isolated person becomes more and more dependent on their abuser for information and other things. More than anything, this means that their relationships often get severed, and so it's harder for them to reach out for help when they need it. One of the things we focus on is harm reduction and how we can use the idea of reducing the harm of violence um, in a variety of different ways, one of those being isolation and a strategy that I love sharing with people. In fact, it's one of the more important pieces of this training for me uh, is this idea of safe and routine communicating. By creating a safe and routine uh, way of communicating, it gives you the opportunity to check in on that person, even as isolation becomes more and more prevalent. Uh, but it also uh, gives you an indication of when things might be changing in that relationship. So I use the mailbox scenario because as much as we are so digital nowadays, we still check our mail, so whether it's in the lobby of an apartment building, at the end of uh, your driveway, in town if you're in a rural context, or in our porches and our front porch. Porches, uh, or the end of the road if you're in the suburbs. Uh, we all end up somehow connecting in with our mailboxes uh, um, in a routine pattern. And so by saying things like every Wednesday, let's meet at the mailboxes, it's not likely to uh, trigger suspicion from that abusive partner since it is an everyday activity. And it gives you the opportunity to check in with that person um, and see where they're at. But even more than that, if that person stops showing up for your weekly meetings, it's a good indication that something more might be going on. Because with isolation, we no longer get the opportunity to check in with that person conveniently every day to see how they're doing. So we need these subtle ways of being able to flag that, you know, there might be something more that you can do to ensure that person is uh, not experiencing imminent harm and other things. 